How are you, my friends? In this video, I'm presenting eight old exams questions related to trigonometric addition and subtraction formulas. Also, some questions related to reduction identity. These are coming from lectures 21 and 22. Let's see question number one. Find the exact value of secant 285 degrees without using any calculators. Now the idea here, we need secant of 285 degrees. Find two angles, their sum or the difference is 285. These angles must be special angles or multiples of a special angle. We see 285 is in quadrant four, so the secant is positive. At least we know that the answer should be positive. So let's try. 240 plus 45. 45 is a special angle. 240 is a multiple of 60. Now, just remember the secant of 285 is 1 over cosine of 285. So let's find the cosine of 285 first, then we find the reciprocal. So cosine 240 plus 45. So this is like u plus v. Now let's apply the formula here, cosine 240 times cosine 45 minus sine 240 sine 45. You can find all these rules and formulas and identities in lectures 21 and 22. So 240, now cosine 45 is a special angle in quadrant one, easy. 240 here is in quadrant three. So we need the reference it will be the angle itself, 240 minus 180, which is 60. So cosine 245, the same as cosine 60, but we have to put a minus because 240 in quadrant 3 and the cosine is negative. The same thing for sine 240 is minus because it's in quadrant 3. Sine, the 60 is the reference angle. Now let's continue. See here we have two minuses. So minus cosine 60 will be minus half. This is cosine 45 square root of two over two. There is a minus here from the formula. And this is minus square root of three over two and sine 45 square root of two over two. Now there is a minus here and there are two minuses there that becomes plus. So that's why we have square root of six minus square root of two divided by Four. This is cosine 285. Now let's find the secant. Secant 285, 1 over cosine 285. Just take the reciprocal here. 4 over square root of 6 minus square root of 2. We have to rationalize the denominator. So I leave the 4 here. Put in the bracket square root of 6 plus square root of 2. Multiply here the difference between two squares. So that's 6 minus 2 which is four, cancel this four, and the answer square root of six plus square root of two is the answer for secant 285. Now, question number two, find the exact value of cotan 59 pi over 12. Same, eyes, same idea as question number one, but this is maybe a little harder. 59 pi over 12. See, the, the angle in, in question number one was 285, which is between 0 and 360. So no need for coterminal. Here we have 59 pi over 12. That's greater than 2 pi. So any angle greater than 2 pi or greater than 360 or less than 0, you must find coterminal. So the coterminal we subtract multiples of 2 pi or multiples of 360. How do we know? So we just divide quickly 59 divided by 12. Just very quickly, just you need the first number. It will be 4 point something because 4 times 12 is 48. You cannot put five here. So four point something, that means we can subtract four pi. Four pi means two times two pi, which is two complete cycles. 
So 59 pi here, find the LCD 12, minus 48 pi over 12. This becomes 11 pi over 12. Now 11 pi over 12 lies in quadrant 2. So the reference will be the pi minus the angle 11 pi over 12, which is pi over 12. So tan 59 pi over 12 will be minus because the angle lies in quadrant 2. See this angle 59 pi over 12 and its coterminal, which is 11 pi over 12, both lie in quadrant 2. So we have a minus tan the reference, reference pi over 12. So minus tan, now pi over 12 still not special angle. So I can say that the pi itself, 4 pi minus 3 pi divided by 12. Why I thought of this idea? Because 12 is 3 times 4. So I can include here 4 and 3 so that when I split it, it would be 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. I can cancel the 4, then I can cancel the 3 here. So it becomes minus tan pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And this is a special, this is a special. Now we need in the question cotan, let me show you the question. This is cotan 59 pi over 12. It will be one over tan 59 pi over 12. So we can find this formula here easier. This is formula number six in the lecture, which is tan u minus v. Remember the minus outside. Now let's continue. So we have a minus, see this is the minus outside. See this minus not in the formula. This is from quadrant two. Now let's apply the formula. Tan the u minus tan the v, one plus tan u times tan v. So there is a minus there, pi over three, which is 60. So the tan will be square root of three minus tan 45 is one. And one plus, this is the same here, square root of three times one. Now let's include the minus here. So the minus becomes minus with the square root of three, so that's a minus. Minus with the minus one becomes one. So one minus square root of three, and this is the same one plus square root of three. Now this is tan, remember tan 59 pi over 12. I need cotan 59 pi over 12, which is the reciprocal, so it will be one plus square root of three divided by one minus, then multiply by the conjugate, one plus square root of three. This becomes squared, or you can multiply binomial, you can multiply term by term. This is one square root of three, square root of three plus three, and this is one minus three, which is minus two. And this is uh, two square root of three plus four. Let's divide by minus two, take two common factor, cancel it. So the answer becomes minus square root of three minus two is the cotan. Nice question. Now we have in this question, there's a nice idea. We have sine of x plus y minus one over four and sine x minus y one over three. See, so we have x and y are two angles. We need the value of cosine x times sine of the y, the product, we need the product. So what can we do? Just apply the formula here on the first one, apply the formula on the second one, then we'll proceed. So if we take the first, find the sum and the difference formulas for the sine, because this is sine x plus y. So it would be sine x times cosine y plus cosine x sine y, this is equal minus one over four, given. Let's call this equation one. Now sine x minus y becomes sine x cosine y minus cosine of the x sine of the y is equal one third. Let's call this equation two. Now let's see equation one minus equation two. You see this is what we need here. Equation one, see this is equation one minus equation two. So this one here, the pluses together minus this. See, this will be canceled. And when you put minus there in equation two, this and this will add up to two cosine x sine y. And then here we 
have minus one over four and there is a minus in equation two, so it becomes minus one over three. Just be careful here. See, this is like multiply equation two by minus one, then add. This is another way you can see it. So that's minus seven over 12. Now here we have two, so divide by two, we get cosine of x, sine of y is equal minus seven over 24. This is what we need here, cosine x times sine y. This is what we need here. In the yellow, you can see it. Now here we have secant of a, two angles, we have a and b, secant of a three over two, a belongs to quadrant four. So the secant is positive. And cosecant of b three over two, b belongs to quadrant two. Let's find the value of cotan a minus b. Nice question also. So from A, the secant of A here, we have three over two. We can find the reciprocal, which is the cosine of A two over three. And we know the cosine of A is X over R. So I can find Y. I can use this formula here, X squared plus Y squared is equal R squared. See X squared is four, Y squared I need. R squared is nine. So Y will be plus or minus square root of five. Why I take the minus? Because a is in quadrant four. So I need the tan of the a, which is y over x. Now the same for angle b, since we have cosecant b three over two, b is in quadrant two, so we can find sine of b, the reciprocal of cosecant, two over three, which is equal y over r, and then we can use the same formula, x squared plus y squared is equal r squared. So x will be minus square root of five because x is negative in quadrant two. So tan of the b will be the y, which is the two over x minus square root of five. We can write it minus two over square root of five or two over minus square root of five. Now let's use the formula for tan a minus b. Just remember that we need the cotan of A minus B. So first we find tan of A minus B here, then we find the reciprocal. Now from the last slide, I found tan of A minus square root of five over two, tan of B minus two over square root of five. I can rationalize it here, multiply up and down by square root of five, so it becomes minus two square root of five over five. So I can use this and then I can use this and I'll use both. Let's see here. Use the formula tan of A minus B, tan of A minus tan of B divided by one plus tan A times tan of B. Tan of A is there, you see minus square root of five over two minus from the formula. Tan of the B, I will use this one here with the rationalized minus two square root of five over five divided by one plus, see one plus tan of A, this is the same as tan of A minus square root of five over two. Tan of B, I will use the first one. You see, because if you multiply tan of A, tan of B, you get one here in this question, not always. So minus square root of five divided by two, minus two divided by square root of five, you cancel, so you get one plus one there, so that's two. And here we need the LCD 10. So that's 10 here multiplied by five. And there's a plus here with the two minuses. You multiply by two, so you get four square root of five. When you add, you get minus square root of five divided by 10, all divided by two, which is multiplied by the reciprocal one over two. So minus square root of five over 20. This is tan of A minus B. Now, what do we need? Cotan of A minus B, which is the reciprocal. So one over that one, one over that one minus square root of five over 20, which is minus 20 over square root of five. We rationalize it. See, there is a five there canceled with this. So minus four square root of five is the cotan of A minus B. Question number five, simplifying the expression will give. So this is a multiple choice question. We have tan 145 degrees minus cotan 55 degrees divided by one plus tan 145 times cotan 55. 
So the answer can be one of these answers. 10, 10, 10, 20, 10, 15, minus 10, 70, minus 10, 25. Now, there is no formula that looks like that. See, this is the first thing we do. Now, in the solution, I can start with cotan 55 degrees and use co-function identities to change it into tan of something. So cotan 55 degrees would be tan 90 minus 55, which is tan of 35. So the cotan 55 here, I can replace it with tan 35 here, same thing for tan 35. Then I can see here tan of an angle minus tan of another angle divided by one plus tan of the first times tan of the second. So I can use this tangent formula, tan of the difference backwards, you see backwards. So I have this one here, tan of u, which is tan of 145 minus tan of 35, which is tan of v divided by this exactly the same. So I can go back. So this becomes tan 145 minus 35. You subtract that, so you get tan 110. See, tan of 110, there is no answer there, I think. There is no tan here, 110. So you have to proceed and simplify more. So you take angle 110, it belongs to quadrant 2. So let's find the reference. The reference will be 180, remember, in quadrant 2, minus 110, which is 70. So tan of 110, so we write plus or minus, we have to check the quadrant here, in quadrant 2, 110, right? So that will be minus. Tan of the reference, whatever the reference of 110, which is 70. So we write minus tan of the 70. So that would be the answer D. Now let's find the exact value without using any calculators of sine 10 degrees, cosine 70, minus sine 80, cosine 20. Now here there is no formula that looks like this. You see the angles are different. 10, 70, 80, 20. So also we have to use co-function. So sine of 10, cosine of 70. See the first one here, I will leave it. I will work with the second part here. Sine 80, I can change it to cosine by using co-function identities. Cosine 90 minus 80, it will be cosine 10. That's the formula there. And then cosine 20, I can change it to sine 90 minus 20, which is sine 70 by using this formula. So now the question becomes sine of 10 degrees cosine 70 minus, this is the question here, sine 80 cosine 20. It becomes sine 10 cosine 70. That's the same, the first term here, minus cosine 10 from the co-function. And this is sine 70. So now we have the same angles. See sine of the U, see this one, sine of the U, cosine of the V minus, cosine of the same U, sine of the same V. Now let's go backward again. So that would be sine of 10 minus 70. It would be sine of minus 60. Remember the function sine is odd function. So we have to take the minus outside. If this is a cosine function here, it is an even function. There is no need to take the minus out. So we take a minus sine 60, we know sine 60, square root of 3 over 2, and there is a minus in the answer. Question number 7, we have a function 5 times sine of 2x minus cosine of 2x. If this function is written in the form m sine in the bracket tx plus w, let's find the value of square root of 2 mtw divided by pi. So what is the idea here? We have sines and cosines added or subtracted. We have to change it to sine function. That means we will reduce it. That means we have to use reduction identity. So now if you multiply this five, the function becomes five sine of two X minus five cosine of two X. Now let's write it in this form, K sine X plus five. So that's a reduction. So I can take a, the five, which is the coefficient of the sine. You can review that in lecture 22. 
and B is minus 5. Now, just a little remark here. You can take A1 here and B minus 1, and then at the end, you multiply the function by 5. That also will work. So let's, let's proceed now by the normal way. So K will be square root of A squared plus B squared, which is here 25, 25, 50. So 5 square root of 2, this is the K. Now to find phi, sine of the phi will be B over K. So the B here over the K. And then the cosine of the phi will be A over the K. So now where is this angle? The sine is negative and the cosine is positive. So phi is in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4 and the reference is 45 because it is sine and, and the cosine are square root of 2 over 2. This minus and this plus becomes quadrant 4. So phi will be 2 pi minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi. See, this is the LCD 4 here. So 8 minus 8 pi minus 1 pi. So 7 pi over 4 is the phi. So we can write the function now in this form. You see, k sine x plus phi. Now this x in the formula, see, this is the formula, the green one, this is the formula. So this x in the formula, now the argument in the given is 2x. So we write here 2x. That's from the given, you see, the given argument. And the k is 5 square root of 2 plus the phi inside is 7 pi over 4. Now, this is, this is the question. This is the formula here. And here is the question. M is this one now. So we write M 5 square root of 2. T is this coefficient of the x. So T will be 2. W is that number after the plus, which is 7 pi over 4. So let's multiply now. Square root of 2. The M is 5 square root of 2. T is the 2. W is 7 pi over 4. All divided by pi. Believe it or not, when you simplify all this, you get 35. So you just cancel the pi here, 1 over pi multiplied by the reciprocal. Square root of 2, square root of 2 is 2, times 2 is the 4, cancel the 4. Let's see question number 8. Similar, very similar to question number 7. Just some changes here we have. So the function f is 3 sine pi x plus 3 square root of 3 cosine pi x. This function is written in the form a sine b outside here in the bracket x plus c. And the period is r. Then find arc. Arc means here find a. See, this is the coefficient of the sine after you reduce it. r is the period. So multiply a times the r times the c here, this value. See, in the answer, we don't include the B. This is the question. So now the function here is given. Let's write it in this form. So this is a reduction identity. So A is the coefficient of the sine, 3 always. B is 3 square root of 3. Let's find K. So 3 squared, 3 square root of 3 squared. This is 9, right? 3 square root of 3, all squared, 27. So the square root here, when you add 36, so k will be 6. Now let's find sine of the phi. B, B this one. 3 square root of 3 divided by 6. So cancel the 3, square root of 3 over 2. Cosine, A over k, 3 over 6 is half. So the cosine is the half which is positive over here, and sine is square root of 3 over 2, so phi is in quadrant 1. So the reference is the same as the phi, which is pi over 3, 60 degrees. Now let's continue here. So this is the function. See, 3 sine pi x. Now the argument here is pi x. You see the argument? And this is the formula here, k sine x plus phi. That's the formula. K we found, phi we found, x is the argument in the question. And R is the period. So we need to find A times R times C. So let's write now, K is 6 here, sine pi x plus pi over 3. That's the phi. We have to take pi outside here. 
You see? Because the question says, A sine B in the bracket X coefficient 1. So I take the pi out, then X plus 1 third. Now I compare here. A is the 6. You see the A is this 6. And C is this number after the X inside the bracket after we put coefficient of x1. So it will be one third. Let's find the period. The period of the sign after reduction becomes two pi over k. So we need r, r is the period. So r two pi over k. Now what is k in the question here? The coefficient of the x, two pi over pi. So r would be two. So let's find arc. A is six, uh, r is two and C is one third. So this is 12 divided by three. The answer is four. Now, these are the answers for the eight questions we did already. Now, please, for other examples and the formulas, you can see the videos on pre-calculus course lecture 21, which is about addition and subtraction formulas and lecture 22, which is about reduction identity. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much.